We are live and recording. Okay. So, Daniel, <clears throat> I'm just going to get started by uh, giving a little bit of context to anyone who's watching from the community. Uh, I got started in, in the Toe community because of you. When I first entered, uh, you were the first one to make contact and you talked and you encouraged me to do the, the, the Pace One contest. So since then, um, yeah, I feel like I've been making good friends and contacts and interviewing really interesting people from the Toe Discord. And, um, you know, it's always kind of awkward to do these like uh, interviews with someone you already know quite well. <coughs> So, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions that I already know the answers to, but it's because I want other people to know a little bit more about you, where you're from, who you are, and like what you believe in and everything. So um, I'm going to mute myself a lot just because I'm in a cafe and it's kind of loud. So if, uh, if my sound cuts off because I didn't unmute, just let me know. Um, so, you know, basically, insofar as theories of everything goes um there aren't too many that actually attempt to look into everything like literally you know like you observe a pattern through every level um and uh that that is a little bit unique and i i think you saw that i did an interview with um tyler goldstein who has also a very similar uh theory is yours and so he's always looking for the same pattern in multiple ways um can you can you just start by you know doing a general overview of what your theory is about but then i'm going to ask you about who you are and how how uh, it led to that yes uh all right so so basically um my theory background is really rooted in in scientific knowledge that's important and uh, in the unicellular multicellular transition actually could be as an example of uh, scientific uh, knowledge but after that it is going into the directions uh, probably no one didn't make it so basically what I am talking about here with the jumping continuity theory is uh, we are as a multicellular organism haven't been here in the earth in 2 billion years ago. 2 billion years ago there was only to our knowledge only unicellular organisms and uh, in, it's, in this 2 billion time frame the unicellular became multicellular. So we started from, let's say, there a single unicellular organism, and now we have around 50 or 37 trillion cells in our body. And uh, in, in this time frame, this is the number what we just get. Um, and what I'm claiming is uh, what we see currently in the city developments uh, that should be similar what the unicellular uh, time when the unicellular existed they started to cooperate they should have started to generally make these connections and the the similarities is uh, what we can learn from and probably the mechanics and the system is the same on these two level at least. So what I'm claiming after that is uh, if, we, if we look back more in time, the atomic and unicellular transition should be similar to this uh, this transition what we have here and had in the unicellular multicellular level what is important is uh, the 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 for the unicellular organism and multicellular is so big you cannot really imagine the it's um, and we are three dimensional in those 
those cases, unicellular would be one dimension or two dimensional in this regard. What we experience in city level, those systems also two dimensional. What I claim is uh, they probably will be also three dimensional in the future. And uh, that means uh, that uh, system will be also that big for us as we how big we are to the unicellulars. That means for, for a, a city in the future, I claim it should be around uh, 10 kilometer in diameter or so. So you can imagine like like, uh, like uh, Mount Everest, big body with this system together. So, and what is, sorry, I'm talking too much, but what is still important in this regard is I claim um, the observer is uh, observing this phenomenon, what we call universe, and recently I just uh, stumbled upon this uh, description. We are making a map about the territory. And the territory is, could be endless or infinite or, and, but the map is what the observer doing. And uh, that's important. And uh, that's in the current observer state, there is a map that is, has limits and um, but the, this is this whole uh, emergent phenomenon is I, I now my my assumption is infinite in the future and infinite in the past. Okay, so <clears throat> this theory is so comprehensive that. I understand the difficulty you have in trying to explore or explain, you know, to, in a way to explain it in a way that it resumes everything so that someone could get a bird's eye view of exactly what it is you're talking about. Because right now it's, it's trying to almost zoom in on the theory and at the same time zoom out. It's like uh, you're trying to explain the whole theory by going in detail, but the problem is the, the detail. You go into detail you have to explain a whole sequence of events so that someone can get the bigger picture but this takes longer and then in the end it's very hard to contextualize this type of theory so i kind of wanted to explore yours in conjunction with tyler's because tyler does give a world like a really big view but we don't go into the nitty gritty details although we could with him but your you're still, you're still going into some details that are a bit different than his. And I, uh, I'm curious about the differences between the two of your theories. But for, for the moment, uh, I wanted to ask two things. One, you use the word like harmonics or something like that earlier. I should have stopped you. But anyway, there was a word I wanted to know what that meant. In any case, the second thing I wanted to ask you is, this development into like a three-dimensional structure for the next level. So human beings come together or if cities are the next level. Um, have you considered that maybe the next dimension isn't necessarily uh, the third dimension and that maybe the internet is itself the next dimension. So it's more virtual. Yeah. So, so, but I, so, so first of all, that's that's important. This is this is a theory. This is a this is work in progress. The second is um, I have big assumptions. Assumptions. So I I have assumptions what I'm working with, and one of the assumption is uh, I start from the the human experience, and uh, because because in the future and we lose accuracy and certainty to what we know. So what, what I have to do is I, I try to use the human unicellular uh, relationship as the base baseline. And this is why I, uh, I use this project, this to the future because 
in if if it's if it's right it's already happened at least three times and it's happening at the fourth time now as the cities or actually i can say the on ant uh, colonies is going towards this 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 uh, space so so the, the okay so you so can i stop you there so just to reiterate it seems to me like what you're saying is because the assumption is that the pattern that you've been seeing has been occurring across physical dimensions that it will continue into the future um which means that the this this uh collection of from you know unicellular to multicellular to you know human beings uh which is multi-organ i guess to cities and so on uh to see tyler he stops at the family unit i believe he calls that the final cast or maybe no the next one after that is technology but he takes it you know it seems like you are go in between the family unit and technology you go to the city okay which is the next logical step after a family um so uh it's interesting that you do that so does that mean that then that even if you are wrong about the underlying assumption that this pattern repeats itself in a physical way that the pattern itself still holds and that your theory would be correct in so far as there is another level or a collection coming together beyond the human being although maybe not not be in cities it might be multi-planetary or something like that yeah that's that's a little bit more uh, uh, interesting question because if that uh, doesn't hold to the future i cannot assume it holds to the past as well so in that case my theory it needs to be changed a little bit more than than usually anticipated so so because uh, so okay let's maybe let's talk about this uh, the the technology for Tyler and the city for me, it's a little bit different in this case. I don't use uh, families as, uh, as, as this uh, next level of organization because the... Oh, all right. Be because the, the cities is formed as a, as a physical physical organism together because we have the connections and you can think about the the cells as well families and houses so so um in this case it's always the you know always you have a, a unicellular and that a multicellular so in in our case the the city is the multicellular and the ingredients or that could be humans and and the houses you know that's that's so deep in the details so so the, but basically that's the that's the idea and what okay is so <clears throat> sorry so i think i understand i just want to clarify because i i want us to zoom out right away now because it's starting to become apparent a little bit now it's a bit more clear but it seems to me like what you're saying is that you've chosen to go based on uh, dimensions because that's what you're observing in a literal fashion. Like unicellular is just one cell. Multicellular is is that replication of the last physical dimension coming to coming together to to form another physical dimension. So it's you know. If, if it's the family units, well, the family units might be too small or uh, insignificant insofar as being something that you can define as a, as a dimension. Like a family unit, a, a group of people isn't enough to say that that is a new dimension, maybe. And it seems like, you know, if, if a city itself acts a lot more like a, an organism that is, let's just say, more than multicellular, because like you said, if it if it if this pattern continues into the future, then it would have to be something that we can't imagine in a way. It'd have to be a different dimension because from, we understand unicellular and multicellular, right? Multicellular is just a replication of, of unicellular. So the third level 
beyond us is something we maybe aren't able to conceptualize but maybe we know the ingredients and you're saying that the better best ingredients uh would be cities because cities behave more like a like a multicellular thing is that right or wrong uh, it's the city is not the ingredient so so let's let's uh, talk about this so here is the unicellular and here is the multicellular we have one and we have let's say 50 trillion unit and uh, what what i'm doing here i i decrease this multicellular to to the unicellular level so now this the multicellular is the uni in this case because a human is a uni in this level and a city is became the multicellular so this became the uh, the city so the ingredients first the first level ingredients is the human and until we get 50 billion trillion people into this system then i claim that will when we get the 10 kilometer uh, di diameter and this this pattern goes back and forth so in the okay okay so that makes sense so i'm going to reiterate it one more time to to make it even more simple so is it are you saying that because the human being itself is is itself the ingredients that it would require a certain amount of human beings that would satisfy this pattern and the, the and a certain number of, of human beings and and what is the vehicle that human beings are shaping cities they're not shaping families the collection of human beings the individual uh, you have to take the individual as a human being not the family unit because the family unit we already see that we see, see that as a level and it's not really corresponding with this pattern or the number that you're talking about that you're finding everywhere that makes sense yes okay great okay so now let's zoom out because this is where i think um there might be some difficulty in understanding your theory when you're describing it in in the discord chat and when people uh you know because you are zoomed in on this number and dealing with with it in many different levels different ways so that it becomes hard to understand like what it is as a theory of everything because you know this pattern it seems to me that it's it's about making predictions and if you can make a prediction about how the future is going to develop in a very real physical manner or it could be in a, in a manner regarding events right so things that are happening then maybe we can harness some utility or you know uh practice uh develop new practices new new things new technologies i don't know who knows what's going to be useful but that's a question for you later on the point is i want to know what kind of theory of everything you have and and i want to know do you believe that if you see the pattern between how things emerge in this universe that that satisfy satisfies you you know the criteria of what a theory of everything is because if, if there's a pattern that links everything together then then you could say that that was that is what everything is it is this number or this pattern are you in a, in a way in a word or in a phrase are you re, a reductionist do you believe in reducing everything to one idea or equation or number Yeah, yeah, int interesting. It's uh, uh, the recent development in science. There was a reductionist view in the last 120 years, and now we are getting out of it. The complexity science, the system science, and uh, the more the worldview is uh, getting out of reductionist uh, only. Um, um so what what i do is you have this pattern but uh, for example if someone 30 years ago found out this pattern without 
the knowledge what is going on here, then they probably don't understand. So in one, one point, you need to have this uh, understanding of the theory and the, but the mechanics. And the other hand, you can have the description, the mathematics or something like that. You can have- So that's the word. Sorry, that's the word. You said mechanics. Mer what is that? The mechanics or harmonics? Me mechanics, or sorry, mechanics, mechanics. Okay, what is that? What is mechanics? Like how it works, like the me mechanica. Oh, you know, me oh me the, sorry. The, me the mechanics. The mechanics. Ah, okay, the mechanics. Okay, I just want to know. Okay, so the mechanics of it. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so you can have the understanding, and that is cool, without the mathematics. But uh, so I think that's the that's the way. I I went through to the general understanding first, and now I start to realize the real mathematical and and pattern recognition. So I had first the main idea, and then later on found what is the correlation. You need to be really careful because you can cherry pick really easily. Uh, so I still try to improve myself on, all right, that's correct or not really correct, but but uh, just some thoughts about the theories of everything. So so this is still, we are, we have to be careful and precise here. The, the theory of everything is still always in our current uh, information and understanding. So for, um, for example, 400 years ago, this understanding was smaller. 100 years ago, this, this was a little bit bigger. And what I see at the moment, the next paradigm shift is, is going out. It it's makes this, uh, you know, trying to find where it is and then start to form with a bigger bubble. And that's actually what is emerging all, all over the place in all, every scientific uh, field. In the last 20 years, you saw lots of breakthroughs and this is going that direction. Okay, so to go back on my question, because I do want to hold your feet to the fire here. I asked you if you believe that your theory is a is a reductionist theory meaning that you can reduce it to one thing what you explained to me was that there, there's the possibility of understanding the mechanics of a theory without the mathematics and that right there in a way is a reduction but at the same time you said that there's a complexity that emerges continuously over time therefore although you are reducing it to a pattern this pattern emerges or changes over time, or it changes everything about the world that we know over time. Therefore, it is both a, re, re, let's say, reductionist and an expansionist theory at the same time. Is this correct? A uh, somewhat, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, so what is, what is important? I already know, uh, and actually in my theory, it should predict in the in the next 30 years it will be changed so so actually if i'm right it will be right it will be known in the next 50 years so so that's that's actually kind of powerful because uh okay it's scary sorry so uh, yeah well so when you say it will be known this new paradigm shift are, are you saying like for example we can look back 30 years ago from now and say the internet that was a new paradigm shift in communication and so are you saying that the same kind of thing is going to happen it's it's a little bit more so you have to go back to 100 years and then 300 years so the 100 years physical understanding of the world that was because because really what we we deal with is that uh, the understanding of the world so in Newton time, people said natural philosophy. So they started with that uh, idea. And uh, and 300 years ago, that was the, the Newtonian mechanics. 100 years ago, that was 
quantum mechanics and relativistic uh, views. And uh, now it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I really need to be careful I re and really need to be humble because because that's that's powerful things and i i cannot tell everything it's just i have to be more humble than than uh, normally i i would speak so but but before okay. yeah so <clears throat> so i was just trying to get a specific answer out of you as to how you view this next paradigm shift not necessarily in terms of what it is. I don't necessarily want you to explain what it is going to be, but whether you believe that, perhaps I could put it this way, do you believe that we will understand it as clearly as we understand the meaning of the internet today? Like we understand now what it is that the internet does and how it's useful and, and just how profound its implications are. So do you believe that this paradigm shift will be something that each individual human being will be aware of and will understand? Or do you believe that perhaps it'll be so drastically different and that we will be a part of it in a way that we won't actually understand it, but we'll know that something changed? Yeah, it's uh, so. So, for example, now we have better understanding about the world than 100 years ago. And most of the people is aware about, let's say, quantum mechanics and relativistic. But... Uh, views but but this is also important not everyone interested in these cases but everyone day-to-day -day life is uh, affected by those ideas so a, either they are uh, experiencing it or they aware of, about it so this will happen as well uh, in the next uh, paradigm shift at the time it will be the 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 current one will be questioned and uh, but understand better so this is also important my theory in in principle should contain every theory be before and and this is what i think it's it can do but uh, to properly understand that's that's a huge task Okay, so when you say it's going to include every theory before, are you talking about physics theories? So from Newton to Einstein to all the quantum mechanics that came after, and then yours is like another level of mathematical, mathematically based theory of like physics theory of everything. Uh, kind of yes and kind of no. Um, it's it's not just physics and and actually this is this is one of the the key moment here the the next so so the the, the relativistic and einsteinian paradigm paradigm shift it's it was not about the physics may, mainly it was about the idea of okay it's every every level can be relativistic just one thing not but it's the the main idea was the, the the key and uh, in the newtonian mechanics also the key idea or the the, the main idea is the key to, to the next level of understanding and what is also important to the to the newtonian level 300 years ago we had this uh, understanding and and one until 100 years ago people Ex, uh, experienced and understood this Newtonian mechanics until they claimed physics is down and we know almost everything. And then exactly that time came the new paradigm shift. So this is also baked into my theory. The, the, this is the, the first, first uh, um, phase is exponential growth. Then it's levels off and then has a leveling side. Then the second second uh, level, it starts from this leveling off and starts with also an exponential. And then there's also levels off. So this kind of wave is going all the way 
this is what I claim here in my theory is all the way down to the, the future or to the past and to the future as well. What is important is the, the time frame is uh, shortens. So 300 years ago, 100 years ago, 30 years ago, but okay. for a little bit more understanding that that's a little bit more hard, uh, difficult because. Okay. Yeah, I understand. And so there is a singularity that occurs over an exponential sort of like pattern that leads, leads to the singularity. I guess that's a bit of a part of a lot of people's theories so that that stays consistent with a lot of other theories as well, which means we all seem to be on to something, you know, similar. <clears throat> now, I was going to ask first, do you consider your theory to be that key that will lead to the next understanding of this new paradigm shift? And also, if yes, what utility will there be? Do you, do you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't uh, publish the whole theory yet. So people cannot read and understand properly what I am talking about. Uh, so as I said before, I have to... I have to not answer this question, the first question, because uh, I think something, but uh, it might change later and uh, we have to discuss this. Um, the utility for my theory, what I, what I see, it's, uh, as, as I understand this, uh, I, I feel so powerful or in in quotes I I feel like I I see this uh, whole thing falls out and like like I feel I'm nothing and everything at the same time and uh, it's it's like an interesting feeling and what I hope if if someone starts to understand they will they will see the view word as as me so so the word view is also powerful in this frame, framework because all all it is says the the cooperation is the key to the future and and that's 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 one of the most powerful message here how would you define cooperation Yeah, so so for you you are uh, you are working for a common goal or doing things together for a common goal. That's that's how I call it. And uh, and that's that's important in the unicellular level. We couldn't be here if the unicellulars can cannot cooperate in this this case. So. So that's that's what I see. Uh, the cooperation, if if it uh, works, and if it's uh, manifest, that will drive our future to the. Okay, so if I could boil it down for you, does that mean that your definition of cooperation is to achieve something transcendent, something higher? whether we're aware of it or not. Yeah, that's, that's going to be as well. Okay. So um, let's get a little bit more personal now. I mean, we've talked about your theory. We see that it's obscure still, very uh, mysterious, because there are some things you're not talking about. Um, and it comes from a place of humility. And, and also, you just want to be sure that it might not change. And and so I understand that. And that is quite unique because so far I haven't met anyone who says there are some things that I have to share, but I am not sharing them yet. Because typically I think people are excited to share and they want other people to understand them. And I'm sure you want to be understood as well. But I can see that you've taken a different approach. You've not prioritized your desire. You've prioritized the theory itself. So that's cool. Um, so... Did that virtue of patience and humility 
emerge out of your understanding or do you believe that that began before and you already had those virtues <laughs> yeah all right so but i when i first understood my theory and and i said all right i i get this then i said all right i understand myself so it's it's kind of it's kind of i did something like this before without knowing I, what i do so so basically i'm i am altruistic to the to the highest level and uh, i and and so i would like to cooperate on the highest level as well so that's i didn't took myself in first place almost never and where i am in a group i try to see as a system together and that's i like to help the system where i am i i play football and uh, and in the football as well i try to help the system where it needs to be helped and to understand that that you you have to have this mindset and uh, i have to tell you something i learned a lot from children's and uh, the children's i played with children's a lot lots of people were lots of uh, younger children was uh, in our neighborhood and and uh, i allowed them to come to our home and play or i was with them to playing and i i saw the, their nature nature about uh, how how uh, the true nature about how is everything is uh, moving in the in the correct direction without thinking too much so that's uh, that's also my my background is uh, is towards this goal and i didn't know it can be fruitful but uh, but i'm I, it seems like I found some good explanations that I can use, and that's the jumping continuity theory. Okay, so I cut out for a few seconds there. Did you notice that? No? I, I thought okay. you just make it bigger, the screen. No, no, I, I was gone for a few seconds. So can you just, uh, yeah, I was gone for like a minute and a half. So I, I, at least it continued to record, which is great. Uh, can you reiterate what you just said, just in a quick, in a quick? Minute? Yeah. That, do you remember where you cut off? Not exactly. Yeah. I think you All were right. talking. I, I had. I, I asked you. Yes, I asked you about your virtues and whether, and you said that uh, you felt as if though, that you you felt the need to work as a system, and that's where I cut off. Yeah, and so I just talked about I had. Uh, a good relationship with children and i learned from them because i played with them and i allowed them to play with me or i mean we played some legos together we played some video games together and i and i tried to uh, you know, go to that direction okay and so that was an impactful event in your life that gave you that feeling as if though you need to cooperate laterally. It's not, I'm in charge and I tell what, what people, how things have to happen. Okay. So um, that's interesting because, you know, Tyler believes that there will be, like, just like there had to have been, well, not just one, like, <clears throat> but he said that there has to be one unicellular cell that decided to merge with another. So it seems like it was two, but there were the first two that happened. In order to create the multicellular level so do you believe that the, the same thing do you believe that there will be a person or an event that will occur um yeah so here here is maybe a little bit more to my theory because uh, 
a little bit more disagreement with Thailand. So currently as well, as you see, on the whole Earth's surface, we have on everywhere we have cities. So what it what it is shows is it's a little bit more polar process. It's not just like one or two. It's uh, it can be parallel. In the multicellular level, we see three domains of multicellularity: the plants, fungi, and animals. So every every level emerge a little bit uh, different time frame. Seems like the plants were, was first, then then the fungi, and then the animals. There is some reasons about this as well. So um, may, maybe maybe I can uh, highlight this with uh, an example. In the 120 years ago, we talk about there was Einstein. 300 years ago, around there was Newton. But what is what is important? The per, per se, it's not the key in this relation. Imagine if there is if Einstein didn't exist. We would talk about someone else, probably, but even if that person didn't exist, the system would go that way. So this is the powerful uh, mechanics, me mechanics or to the megatrends. The megatrends, what goes further? And... You cut off again. Okay, sorry about that. I'm um, I'm in Colombia, in a small town in the mountains. So this kind of stuff happens a lot. I think for Sunday I'll I'll definitely come, and uh, well I'll go back to the city. There's a city called Santa Marta. Internet is better probably over there. So um, okay, uh, I guess we'll start to cut this short. I guess just because yeah, I don't want this to continue happening, but. Um, to reiterate, I, I think I know what you were talking about. The uh, the the idea that there is something about the way reality is set up that it doesn't matter who it comes through. It's almost like a, just a game of chance. But there's something that culminates into like the idea itself gets closer and closer, kind of like a Leibniz and Newton, okay. right? They both independently derived, and this theory of everything it seems like it's happening the same thing. Except th this time it's special because we are sharing each other's information, and uh, I think the uh, the ideas are getting starting to boil down in front of our very eyes, and we're realizing this time it might just not just be one person; it might be a whole group of people that comes comes up with this new paradigm shift because the idea is there. It's in it's getting clearer and clearer, and we're all sort of working at it like a colony of ants. Um, is that a fair assessment of what you believe? Yes, yes, and and uh, it's kind of kind of the the idea is still similar. Newton and Leibniz they also communicated, but they communicated with letters. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we communicate with letters, that would slow our communication and understanding. That's really important because you can. You can ask me these questions, but you, but I didn't describe very well, and they could not really do it in in that uh, yeah. time in the planet. So, yeah. so my theory as well. It's the communication we also talked about. The communication also, uh, the the communication 
of the, of the speed of the communication also increases and uh, that's that's what we are uh, seeing at the moment as well okay um all right so you're touching on some very interesting things in interesting ways and i know that you know i could continue digging and trying to understand hey like what do you think this is going to lead to and all this but you've i'm going to do this time uh you mentioned 30 years and then you also mentioned 50 years so i'd like you to fix that discrepancy there uh or maybe a misunderstanding on my part uh why those two figures and uh what do they mean yeah the 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 numbers here is not uh not that precise so so there is a range i say it's 30 and 50. it's still not uh probably not the whole range because this is a gaussian distribution so let's let's say from from now 20 and 60 years so there is 40 years in between i don't know exactly when this could happen and also this is a continuous process this is not just one thing happening so so that's uh, that's kind of later we can find out maybe that was they say anno miraculi as newton and einstein in case and what does uh, that mean that's that's the the year of miracles on the miracle yeah the uh the, the latin i just wanted to clarify latin, that. i think yeah so uh yeah um, maybe maybe i wanted to touch on on one thing about the, the my theory yeah. but, uh, go forward if you have questions well no i think uh I think you've answered it and just like Newton I, I, and Einstein, I don't think they understood the kind of technologies that would emerge from their work and from you know, E equals MC squared. I mean, there's the reason we have satellites uh, comes down to a lot of his equation, apparently, things like that. A lot of technologies are based on, on Einsteinian uh, physics or mathematics. So, you know, I, I don't think there's all we know is that this is very meaningful. I think this tow community is aware of it. They're aware of how profound the meaning is. We just can't define the meaning. We can't say here is why it's meaningful. All we know is there's a shit ton of meaning coming uh, our way and we're all working on it from our own little subjective points of view. And that seems to be contributing to, to the major one that, that might pass which is something you've referred to as the paradigm shift. So um, I want to get a little bit more into what your thoughts are about this community um, and where it's headed, why you participate in it. And uh, if you'd like to talk a little bit more about like why this is your life, because this is your life. Like uh, I have a lot of friends in, in this community now and, and uh, or acquaintances, let's say. And I think a lot of them would see it this as their life as well. It's like their whole lives have, have been a culmination of trying to transmit whatever message uh, that they've found about reality. So what's your story? Like, why, why is this your life? What is the best thing a man can do is to, to gain a little bit more knowledge and share it to the world so that's i think that's the best uh, goal someone could uh, try to do and i i set up really high standard goals and this is this is one of the the most advanced uh, goal you can have as a person so hopefully i can i can do something about it and also I am lucky because my background allows it to do. So that's why maybe a little bit I, I feel like I have to do it because I can. And I, I was so um, perfectionist and uh, I wanted to be the best in every level 
uh, and and in that case i was so shy to share my understanding and knowledge but now i don't i don't shy anymore because because mainly what happened with me and uh, even my english is not the best i don't i don't fear about talking and uh, the information is still out there i try to communicate and someone will understand and and someone will ask what i am also saying is uh, you have to understand what i am saying and not how i say okay uh it seems to me like you might not be able to describe the utility uh, that will come from your theory, but at least the meaning. Uh, to me, how it comes across, if I can share my opinion, is that your your theory under what I've put, created, like classification of what types of theories are, there's one type called a predictive type. And I think it's, uh, it's if we can translate it in religious terms, it's like uh, the prophet. It's a, a message of this has happened before. This is going to happen again. You see it in Christianity, right? You see it in, well, in the Judeo-Christian religions. That's uh, that seems to be the the idea that if people can be certain that something is supposed to happen, then they will not have fear, and they'll allow what's supposed to happen to happen. They will work together for it to happen maybe uh so it seems to me like this is why there's a lot of people out there who want to make predictions about when the end of times will occur but the end of times doesn't mean like it's over forever it's it's the end of an age or it's the end of a cycle and there's a new cycle that will or a new paradigm or whatever you want to call it so would you agree with that do you agree that that's the meaning behind your theory is that it is to bring the message of of this event that will occur and that and to just appeal or appease people's minds right just get them to calm down and say this is it like to to bring people together simply with the knowledge that this is what's supposed to happen yes i i agree with that so that's uh and as i described if you understand this uh the first uh one of two weeks when i just understood this you know what it means also i am the i am the let's say 30.8 billion years ago there was a quark and an atom and it's gradually ended up here with me and in the future what i tell third of this time 4.76 billion years ago or later some something also probably will look back into this moment and they also figure out the something they will probably call it some something else but now we know probably humans made it first so this is the this knowledge to to the continuity of the everything is kind of uh, powerful. That's interesting. So your theory is called jumping continuity theory. And now I'm starting to understand the continuity part a little bit in context. This continuity of knowledge becoming more and more aware of this process that happens infinitely into the past and into the future and that knowledge is cycles maybe or a pattern or it reminds me of um of that movie called uh pi you know the number pi and it's uh you saw it yeah. i saw but i don't really uh, remember it uh, clearly uh, now yeah it's uh it was about a, a mathematician a jewish guy in new york and uh he, he's trying to find the pattern or a specific pattern in the number pi. And that somehow, if he's able to find this pattern, he's understood reality. And there's like a, a corporate lady who's chasing him around, trying to, you know, get him 
not just the corporation, but there's a, a Jewish, the, like the, the Hasidic Jew community, Jewish community in New York is also trying to get this number from him. Uh, and also, um, so he's got religion and technology in a way chasing him for this number, for this piece of information that somehow will unlock the powers of reality. Um, and he starts to go insane because the, you know, and now it's not clear in the movie what happened because he's looking for the number because that's what it, that's definitely what it is at first. But then, no, yeah, he does say that he has the number in his head, like, and uh, and that he understands it. I think if I remember correctly, but in the very end, like he had to, he drilled in his own head and he he just decided to live life, you know, without. The knowledge of, of, you know, and at the end, at the end, um, it, it's it seems like a movie that's very, very in line with this community because you know he goes through God complex in a way as well, and he's he kind of goes through this like alternation between uh, I have something important to do, like I'm the prophet Messiah guy, and you know I'm the devil. In a way, he becomes kind of demonic because he. He has to do it. He's. Uh, um, can you hear me well? Yeah. yeah. I think I think they're gonna pass soon. Yeah. But uh, he becomes obsessed by harnessing this number. It's almost demonic, right? Like he he lets himself be possessed by this need, this desire, uh, this greed, in other words. So I kind of see that in this community. I see people who are kind of demonic sometimes. I'm not gonna name names or what they do but I, I notice even in myself i've noticed this like when you're dealing with these high level abstraction knowledge and pure truth and you're seeing patterns everywhere like you do feel powerful and you can be tempted right in, in, in a manner to use that power for some kind of humid need human desire which is so low and and pitiful so i don't know it's kind of an interesting movie i think everyone in this movie should watch it it's i think aronofsky if I'm not mistaken, an Aronofsky, Aronofsky movie. It's called Pi. So uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to use this whole movie scenario as a context um, to try to dive into your life a little bit and your personal experience with coming up with this theory. Have you dealt with the God complex? Because I've I've asked everyone so far, I believe, um, about this in, in like interviews. So I want to know what your thoughts are on this God complex issue and, and why it seems to be something that afflicts this community. Uh, yes. So, so I hope I was able to manage this at the first week. Uh, I, I almost couldn't. Then, then the, the one after one month, I wanted to share to everyone, you know, and that's that's actually normal but uh, i went to back myself and uh, went to do other things and uh, also i wanted i i had i know i i knew that time as well to to be humble enough to just wait a little bit and then you can uh, you can see things from the di different angle and uh, what is uh, kind of a line here is uh, whoever uh, just finds something and uh, is say, how Rico, I found it, I understand. They tend to share right away. That's the usual process. But uh, that's, uh, that's many times it's not the correct way because you need to chill down a little bit and then if it's the second, third time it's correct, then it is. I had theories before jumping continuity theory. Uh, I had one, then another one, and the third one. The third one was the jumping continuity theory in, in this maybe uh, pure sense. So, so that, uh, that means you, and lots of things is something like this. So, so when you, you reach something, then you jump down, then reach another thing, then deep down, 
and the last thing you reach then you can just level off some sometimes but but that's really usually one two steps needed until you get the the final way and uh, that's that's advice i could give everyone who tries to get uh, a theory of everything or something like this level be patient and and uh, try to you can also forget your your thing do play football play video games do something else do work and let go back later on and then if you still see that from a different angle then you are okay okay that's good so it didn't exactly answer my question but you did a, something better you sort of said well here's what i have like uh advice for for anyone who's experiencing this need to want to share things uh you didn't really address god complex but maybe i also didn't explain to you what i mean by that i mean like believing that you are the messiah believing that somehow you're you're the new jesus christ or the you know the next prophet or you are God in manifested in human form you know uh, or the messenger of god in some way like how do you see how do you view that what's your opinion on that yeah it's it is hard uh, because because how i feel it's i feel i know the latest knowledge people can understand and that's kind of scary and and similar to the god complex um so i have to deal with that that's that's uh, that's important you know i would scream this to everyone every day every day and every moment uh, but understanding history as well and that's also not the right thing to do and uh, so i kind of have it and i can kind of don't it's dancing yeah well that's what's interesting about this community right because i do see people fall on either side of it where they seem more like they believe that they are and you see others that are struggling and they're not they're trying to be as humble as possible and they're saying i could be wrong and i want to share ideas with others and i want to i want others to prove me wrong and so on so you know i think it's it's normal if if i could finally come up with my opinion now i think it's very normal to go through this kind of stuff in our community and i think it's something that i was i've been trying to get people to face and admit and talk about because if we fear it then i think it's it has a bigger power than you know and and that's when we might actually make the mistakes that you're talking about so we don't have to fear god complex i think uh we can come together we can talk about it we can help keep each other gr grounded you know because maybe like tyler says we all do have a piece of the knowledge and it's and they all need to come together and so in a way we are all the messiah in a way or we all you know the god complex thing so you know it, it could be a pantheon of gods that's that's happening here <laughs> but what i could add right away and that's that's really good is uh, i see ourselves as the the messengers lots of lots of people is uh, close but what we do is usually the people who can spend the most time on this uh, journey they they can reach to do that level and they can be the messenger but the messenger if the the population does not uh, do does not don't it isn't ready they won't hear the message so that's 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 correlates with the the system together goes this way and we are the messengers there and but most of the people is going there 
Uh, also, uh, so, sorry, can I make an observation there? Seems to me like there might be an, a necessity for many messengers so that some people give their portion of the message and that registers with people at that time. And once they're ready for that message, then they can go on to the next person who has a message and so on. So it's a process, uh, you know. And also, also um, messengers has also kind of in the community. So, so every messenger have their, their uh, communities or could be who understand him better because how complex this is. So this is similar what you just told, but um, so I, I, yeah. I'm going to stop you right there because I saw the graph that you made and I understand it finally. Yeah, I remember you made these tents like graphs and that now that makes sense. So so you're saying in a way like uh, it's almost like uh, translations, right? Like you speak Hungarian, so you understand a certain subject matter that you can translate in Hungarian and, and tell people. So it's almost as if though the different facets of a theory of everything is coming together and we're almost like checking in with each other, kind of like a blockchain technology, checking in with each other that we have the same information and then we can disseminate it to the people that uh, understand on our level. So for example, if you're in the physics level, people will understand. If I'm on the psychological level, people will understand. So like, you know, the way I see Jordan Peterson working is essentially he is doing a translation and he is m bringing a message to the common people based off of some kind of fundamental truth, but he's translating it in a way that the common person can understand. Now, you know, uh, that doesn't reach everyone though, obviously, even Peterson who's an immensely popular. So, uh, and also if I can make the biblical reference, I, I, I believe in the book of the apocalypse or something that it says somewhere in the Christian canonical texts that uh, well, I have no idea if it has anything to do with the canonical text or anything, but uh, the, the, the idea is that uh, in the end of times that there will be many messengers, there will be many prophets. Now, I don't know if that was meant to say that there are a lot of false ones and there's a lot of, and that's probably true. There's always had, there always has been false prophets. And I don't, I don't want to make this out to be a Christian thing. Cause again, I, I'm looking at it from an objective standpoint, but, you know, there's probably a similar thing that you can point out in many different religions that, you know, in the end of times, there are many messages, many, many things happening in a way. But um, I, I want to circle back to what I was talking about when it comes to the, the movie. I find it very interesting how technology and religion are very central here. Like the two seem to be very correlated. Uh, and a lot of the theories that we've discussed, or I'm sure that in this, in this community, people if you talk to them about what well, we often talk about religion and technology i find right and it, it's so central to everything i mean obviously we see religion as a as a way for people to congregate and to communicate and those systems are breaking down so now we're seeing a whole revolution of religion now people don't realize it but when you enter wokeism when you enter yoga and meditation hippie lifestyle or whatever or when you whatever it is these are religions, essentially. So religion is what? It is a structure that allows for religiosity, which is, to me, a different thing. What is religiosity? It is the need for communication, right? Ritual, meaning, purpose, morality, things that religions offer. And so now the traditional ones are breaking down. They need to be updated. Why? Because the world is changing. We're having so much understanding that the, the uh, metaphors of the past no longer make sense, right? When we understand that evolution is evolution, and that doesn't quite fit with uh, traditional religions that say you know, God created man directly, um, this progressivism that has been occurring in religion, because now you know, even the, the church, the, the Pope a few years back, uh, officially decreed that Christianity recognizes evolution and that you know, that's something we understand now, but God is the one who created the, the the evolution right so you know ultimately knowledge expands religions need to expand with it but a lot of them don't and for many reasons and this is why people are now saying they're spiritual you know we have a lot of atheists stuff they oh I, i'm not religious at all but i'm spiritual but but look at how they behave they they, they end up in communities with that are very like-minded 
they they uh, they're almost dogmatic, right? And so you're seeing these like religions, these weird quasi religions popping up everywhere in the form of political like identity, right? You see a lot of like identity politics that's like almost you know a religion. You know, everyone has to be on my team or your team or whatever. But everyone is scrambling for meaning, scrambling for to understand the messages. And what are these messages? Well, it's pure information where it's understanding of the world around us. Uh, we can manipulate uh, biology now to suit our needs. We can engineer babies that are perfect, essentially, human beings. We can manipulate the environment around us. We can do space travel. Like, this is a lot of information. This is a lot of truth. And I don't think uh, humanity is really necessarily capable of handling it yet without some kind of translation that can harmonize everything. So you're harmonizing it in some way. You know, Roy might be harmonizing it for in, in another way. Tyler, Lucy, Brandon, you know, we all have a part to play maybe in, in, in this in this manner. So I kind of just wanted to do a bit of a lecture in that way to contextualize everything we just said. Um, and um, I was going to ask, do you, do you have anything you want to say in regards to this community, what you what you believe about it, what you feel about it? Yes, so, so kind of, I joined around one and a half years, years ago in the to Discord community. I used Discord before that, uh, like five years ago started. So I kind of knew this could be a really good uh, communication method. And, and um, that's, I really like this uh, communi community here because uh, it emerged to the level we kind of start to understand and know each other and uh, it starts to mature in a in a way that's uh, fruitful because then there is kind of a small conversation going on and then you know we share ideas and i'm really thankful actually because maybe without the community i couldn't be finish my a YouTube video because it cleared my understanding more. It helped sometimes with information and uh, the communication as well. It's important, you know. I also just write and then people read, react. They don't like this. They don't. They like that. So I have a feedback mechanics, feedback as well there. So again, I'm really thankful about uh, Kurja Mongal because uh, he started this uh, openly and i am really happy to be here in this community so that's all i can say thank you oh uh, is there anything else you want to share uh, any any other last thoughts or... uh, yeah so so maybe just just one one sentence uh, in in my theory a little bit so so we are collective intelligence of unicellulars. I claim unicellulars is a collective intelligence of atoms. Atoms is a collective intelligence of lower self, probably the quarks we could say, and the cities is a collective intelligence of people. What is important, the, the multicellular, the atomic, the cellular level is already completed. The city level, it's it's emerging and almost in the starting point. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a good way to resume everything uh, in a way, and I can start to have a visual idea of what you're talking about because, you know, if if you see how, and like I said, there seems to be technology in parallel with the meaning of things, which is the religion side, but what you're talking about is manifesting itself in very clear ways right it has to do with communication and it has to do with integration communication leads to integration and you know things coming together so you see guys like elon musk right right now i would say like we could use two people to represent you know what you're talking about jordan peterson facilitates communication he harmonizes so you have a lot of people with different backgrounds different belief systems that kind of come together and they say all right, we understand reality on a level that allows us to behave 
in my in our individual lives in, in a way that is conducive to the society so people can cooperate but then you have elon musk who facilitates communication and integration in every way possible from the brain to computer interface right so that people can upload download and surf the internet directly from their, their brain from the hyperloop high-speed rails that will connect cities together from china china is doing that right like all these mega cities Right, you have all these mega cities that are coming together. We're talking about something like a uh, hundred million people in one city. Mega cities. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, SpaceX, right, to, so that people can travel in suborbital speeds, so they can get to New York from New York to Tokyo in like three hours. Kind of. So this speed between communication is happening in many ways, so that we can move our physical bodies to meet each other, so that we can move our ideas to meet each other faster, to communicate, to integrate, to grow. And so do you believe that this whole, the whole planet will become some kind of massive city? Mm. There is, there is multiple things here. Uh, the all right so so in in a cell there is a limit how big is a cell in atom there is a limit how big is an atom so in a city there is a limit how big is a city can be so in that sense there is no way to be a planetary city but as as i described the cities will be bigger but how they can be bigger? They can be bigger in three dimension. So, so currently the limit will be in the two dimensional. Maybe some one hundred million years, one hundred million people. Uh, but in in the future, what I'm talking about is is a three dimensional stuff, and in three dimension, that's so much bigger than than one hundred million. Oh, okay. So kind of like in Star Wars or Star Trek or something like that, you have these like floating buildings or something like that you like literally mean that the cities will get three-dimensional yes and uh yes so basically okay. basically that's yeah okay and then of course the communication between cities will be quite optimal because we'll have travel like higher or more sophisticated methods of travel and, and information sharing and so on all right very cool very cool that's a great way to end this. Uh, thanks for your time, Daniel. I really appreciate you explaining your theory a little bit and uh, being uh, as personal as you can get. And um, yeah, I look forward to Sunday. That's going to be the first meeting between, I think, a lot of us on like one, you know, video. So I think that'll be cool. I am so excited. And thank you very much, James, also. I'm happy right. we meet. Sounds good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end the recording here. Everyone, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you on Sunday.